Hey, Marty on there. Cousin Charlie, since you were late this morning, I need you to sing in this uh, here. I need you to sing on camera this morning. Could you do that? I don't know if anybody wants to hear me sing. I don't care if they want to or not. I need you to sing. Sing your song, Cousin Charlie. Where the man, hey, to this morning, Cousin Charlie, is he is uh, filling in for Kathleen in the producer spot, so... You can just sit right here in this lovely little chair. Hey, everybody, I don't know if you're aware of this. My uh, GTT mentoring class started last night. Hey, Richard Hodges, Chris, how are you doing, buddy? Started last night. We had a, hey, for us, we had a full house in there. Like, we were packed last night. There were night, like three there. people hey, in there. It's Cousin crowded. Charlie. It was, uh, no, actually, uh, hey, Heather White, how are you doing, girl? Hotty toddy. It was, um, it was fun. It was, I enjoyed it. I don't. I don't know how good I was at it, but I enjoyed it. I got some reviews. Somebody, I had a couple calls this morning. Hmm. How were they, Wadman? What's this going on with the show? Well, hey, here's something I want to add. Uh, whenever you, whenever I force myself, you know, you hey, I think, hey, you know, whatever I force myself to do something like that, what it does, it makes me absorb content. It makes me become the best me. Or a better version of myself. So this morning, man, what we're talking about, Cousin Charlie, Chad Williams, everybody that's on here, good morning to you. We're talking about becoming the best you that you can become. Okay? And everybody has that own picture, that own snapshot in, in their mind of what they feel like is the best version of themselves. My version is not the same as yours. Yeah. Yours is not the same as mine vice versa with you cousin charlie so i do Mine's a 22 year old strapping stallion weatherman back was about 22 what did you like so much about that 22 year old weatherman can you go back he's to that still the same good can he guy go back he can you go back then. can you so no i wouldn't want to go back to him then i'm just kidding i, I like i like the, the version now i like the happily married raise your kids and moving forward in business I, I like the new the new weather man mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so jimbo Hooten, thank you for coming last night buddy hey if anybody out there needs some pest control my guy right here jimbo Hooten, somebody you need to reach out I to like that name Hooten. jimbo Hooten, hoody who so um you know i was not always on a mission for me to improve my, my life. best friends on here who naggy is naggy on here mm -hmm. when are you coming back uh john travolta Nicholas Cage is what I call him. You? If you're if you're good friends with Scott Nagy, you can call him John Travolta. It's an inside joke. You got his other you got his other private cell number. You know yes. he has two phones, right? Yes, yes. You don't have both phone numbers. Yeah. Eight five zero number. <laughs> uh, I don't think he has that anymore. But you know, for hey Joe, how you doing, friend? For forever, most of my life, there was nothing in me that made me wake up every day and say, I need to get better. I need to improve. How can I become the best version of me? And see, I don't believe success in one area of your life justifies failure in another. So I'm trying to improve my everything about me. Face off. You ever seen that movie? Face yeah. Off. Okay. That's an inside joke of me and Scott. Man, have you seen the video hey, that The Rock did? Uh-uh. And, and I, won't, I don't want to interrupt you because this is a show, but he said something very powerful. He, what did he say? He was in the Canadian Football League, was yep. trying to make it pro, and got cut. I did see that. Got I cut, said he had $7, yep. and said he thought he was going to make it to the NFL. He said the best thing that never happened to him was going to the NFL because mm -hmm. he wouldn't be who he was I tried. today. I tried. You know, so it's pretty powerful. So if you get, if you check it out, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, I, I did see that. That was really cool. And The Rock, if you don't follow The Rock, he's one of my favorite people. My favorite. We're, we're similarities. We, people yeah, think we're twins. Yeah, y'all do look like, especially with your shirt off. Yeah. A lot of similarities from behind with your shirt off. I thought, oh, I thought that was Do the you rock. smell? <laughs> I thought that was the rock. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so for me, let me go through this. And hey, I am an only child. I'm a proud narcissist. Let's talk about my day. How I become the best me, okay? Okay. It's the same pattern every single day. I've got to wake up. I've got to do the same thing. Yeah. What time do I wake up, Cousin Charlie? 4.50. What's the first thing I do every single morning? Check your phone. Uh, well, that is the first thing. What else do I do, weatherman? You know it being great. What? It doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it matter. matter. <laughs> but do you know what the first thing I do? I, I do check my phone. Pat Lucky. Look at the phone. I Pat yeah. Lucky. I go in there. I do my pre-workout. I go out there. Uh, uh, hey, since my damn car is junk now, 
I've got to go out there and start my car because the heat doesn't work in it. So when it's real cold, if I start it and let it warm up for like 30 minutes, when I get in there and I get up to like 40 miles an hour, it starts blowing heat. So, <laughs> so I'm doing that on these cold mornings. But I'm in the gym every single morning by 6 o'clock, except on Sundays. But every single day, I'm in the gym. Then I go to the diner. I leave the diner every single day at the same time. Yeah, just I call Tim Dutton. Just up I call Tim Dutton, who is one of my mentors, every single day. See, if you're looking for a mentor, if you're looking for somebody out there that can really, really help you, you've got to force yourself to get in their face. You can't come to them occasionally and want to talk to them. I'm in Tim Dutton's face every single day. The reason why I reach out to Tim Dutton every single day is he can tell me something that elevates my mind. It makes me think a little bit right. more. So every single morning, hey, Lee Barnes, how are you doing? Every single day at 7.35 or 7.36, I call Tim Dutton. I talk to him in the time until the time I get in, then I talk to Brittany, then I get in here and we do something like this every single morning. The reason why I do the morning, Brian, cousin Charlie, you may tell you one of the reasons why I do this. Hey, I'm right here too. Oh, hey, hey, Natalie. Natalie Phillips, how are you doing? Well, do you know why I do the morning grind? Other than the fact I'm a narcissist, do you know why I do the morning grind every single day? You like seeing your pretty face in that picture. I like right to look there. at myself. I'm on Rodan and Field, so I like to it look at... It keeps you doing something. It keeps you active. keeps you motivated. keeps you mind. It, it keeps, keeps me challenging. committed. That's yeah. exactly right, Rock. It keeps me committed to improving. It forces me every single day to go absorb content, right. which makes me co constantly grow. If I didn't do this every day, I wouldn't read. I wouldn't follow other people. I wouldn't absorb content. So that's just one way. Hey, Brian Chalmers, thanks for coming last night. John Burleson, how are you, buddy? Um, where was I? Shit. Keeps you committed. Keeps you keeps reading. Keeps you committed. Keeps, keeps me growing. This makes me continue to grow. I'm in pursuit every single day of becoming the best. Hey, Carrie Ann's here. How you doing, girl? So how many different areas of your life are important that you want to grow in? See, I cannot just be the best me and not be the best committed partner to Brittany Renee. I agree. So it's not, I can't, I don't just look in these little areas of my life, these little streams of my life and say, I'm only going to improve right here because I don't believe in balance, by the way. The, I'm a whole person concept where if one thing is not working in my life, that means I'm not executing at where I want. So for me, I've got to, uh, I'm fat right now. I got on the scale at the gym this morning and I was like, damn, I'm that fat. And I've got to go to the doctor this week. This week. Tomorrow. Uh -oh. uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh -oh. So tomorrow, hey, I got to go to the doctor. I'm sitting there. I'm like, man, I'm fat. So I worked out a little bit harder. Worked out yeah, a little yeah. bit hard. I that, yeah, I probably dropped some pounds. Yeah. So, looking at my life, I've got I've got work, finance, put that together. Every single day, I need to improve that. I've got my health, which I've totally let go to hell from Thanksgiving to to now. Think about that. Hey, I probably have gained a few chins since then, if you know what I mean. What do you talking. What do you equate that to? What would be the reason? So, all these millions of viewers. So, what changed you? So. Most people when they get in a committed relationship, that's one of the first things. So you go to the gym all the time. I see you eating right at breakfast. For the most part, you're eating right at lunch. So how, how in my, if I'm outside looking in, where's it coming from? Where's what coming Are from? Are you the sneaking weights? and eating ice cream late at night? No, I haven't made enough painful adjustments to lose weight. I can maintain, yeah. but I've kind of crept up. And I'll see whether, man. Um, I'll be all right. Yours is, a, you got to work harder because you got stuff going on. What, what, are you making fun of me? No, me? I'm just saying, but... I, the fact is, I'm type 2 diabetic. Right, right. And, uh, hey, that's a fat person disease, which I'm very embarrassed by the fact that I am type 2 diabetic. Cousin Charlie, you better be on the... Hey, Jeremy Winger, how are you, buddy? You better be aware of that because but it runs in our family. you twice as hard. Well, I just got to avoid uh, foods. I got to avoid carbs that, you know, they make me fluffy. Oh, okay. But here's the fact. There's a lot of times I'm eating very, very bad. Okay. I ate pizza Sunday night. I ate terrible Saturday. Probably ate terrible on Friday. Burn more calories than what's coming in. Watch alcohol and sugar. Say, hey, I probably drink once a week. Yeah. So there's things that I'm doing that are causing me over time to gain a pound a week. Yeah. They say, you know, I should be 195 pounds right now, Cousin Charlie. I'm 224 pounds naked on our scale in the morning. By going to are, gym. You, are you stepping at the back of the scale? No, when you I want to know exactly... <laughs> I'm exactly, I, I want to know exactly where I'm at, but Weatherman, you, uh, I, I want to highlight on one thing that you're talking about. 
how do you have a better awareness of things in your life? Do you have little checkpoints? Here, I talked about this last night. You've got to have these little alarm clocks that go off in your life that remind you of where you are. So very, very average. Let's take me. I was very, very average for 30, hey, for just about all my life. Let's not even um, put a... a um, put a whatever up it doesn't matter i was very average and i would have checkpoints yearly and what a checkpoint would be is i would reflect back on my year and think damn i didn't do very much doggone it next year is going to be the next year hey tyler how you doing friend next year i'm going to do more next year that was my mindset so my my checkpoints were every 365 days The better you get, the more frequent those checkpoints happen. So as you're improving, you might say, well, I'm going to check up every six months. Ooh, every six months I'm going to see where I'm at. Okay, as you continue to improve, you might say, I'm going to check up once a quarter. Mm. Every time you move those checkpoints in to where they're sooner, you're becoming more aware of where you are. And the more aware of where you are, it will it will it will make you will it'll motivate you, it will inspire you. So as you get better. You do it monthly. You keep bringing that in. Elite performers like The Rock, they have an alarm clock that goes off every hour. So yesterday, I was in there, I was dicking off a lot yesterday, and Cousin Charlie is in there, and I'm like, man, I have not done anything. You know, I'm forcing myself to become more aware of what I've done. So in the old days, I would, that would not have even registered with me. I'd have just gone all day, and my, my checkpoint was that year. My alarm clock would have gone off in uh, January of the following year. So the, the more aware that you become of the truth and what you have done, the more accountable you want to be with yourself, the, uh, the more likely you don't get fat like what I've gotten. You don't start uh, throwing away your money. You, you, you're constantly going to strive to become better. Cousin Charlie, is there anything you'd like to add since you almost showed up late? Do we have any comments you'd like to make? Well, you know, before, I used to let myself get down over something, and it just ruined my day. But now I've started putting checkpoints in, something we've worked on. Mm-hmm. I had a checkpoint at 730 this morning. What was it? Uh, did I get up and go to the gym? Did you? Didn't go to the gym, but I made myself go run outside because it was warmer. How far did you go? Two and a half miles. How do you feel about yourself? I feel, I feel so great. So you can give yourself a little check. Yeah. You feel good. So what you did is you had a little momentum go. You got up, you worked out, you ran, you feel better about yourself. Yep. What that does, it gives you a little bit of confidence. Now what's the next step? What's the what's your next goal for today? My so, next goal at 10 o'clock, I want to have at least 15 calls or talk to 15 people this morning. By 10 o'clock? By 10 o'clock. Well, see, hey, you goal. could say, hey, Tyler Burnett, do you know anybody looking to buy or sell a house out there? that you could help me, Cousin Charlie, the weatherman with. Hey, this is the way we should be prospecting right here, mm-hmm. weatherman. Weatherman, is there anything you'd like to add? Hey, you always bring my spirituals. Spirituals. No, you know, every day you wake up is a blessing you hear. So, I mean, that's the, at the end of the day, there we live in a wonderful place. We live in a wonderful city. We got a lot of things to be thankful for. You have to find joy in everything. What if, I, what if I'm a fat guy and lazy and I find joy in comfort? Well, here, here's your, here's your joy. You have a you have a, a lady that loves you very much. Yep. And you have a dog that thinks the world of you. You have a, a future stepson that, that looks to you for guidance and advice. You have a team that you're surrounded by that that looks up to you. Well, so, I mean, that is a great so, house. So why, Damn. Why, why could you not find joy in that? And you're worried about two twenty four, two twenty two. Well, see, I, here's where, here's where I'm looking, how I'm looking at it. You've got to find things, reasons that are bigger than yourself. Right. So the reason why I can't stay stagnant is because of all the people that are around me. Sure. But so that's why I can't be comfortable forever. Hey, when you're a narcissist like me, am I saying that right? When you're a mm-hmm. narcissist like me and you only think about yourself, maybe you don't think about improving. But now there's people around me yeah. that, hey, I've got to do this for Brittany. Hey, she ain't going to allow me to get fat. Not that it's fat, it's more about being so unhealthy. Because as I get fatter, I become, my blood sugar goes up, which if you're type 2 diabetic, now everybody, I mean, every every doctor will say you need to be on a cholesterol-lowering medication. Yeah. I don't want to be on any type of medication that's going to alter the way I naturally feel. 
cousin Charlie, you and Kathleen. Kathleen, we miss you this morning. I don't know if you're on here. I saw you. Maybe you just signed on and got off. But, hey, we miss you this morning. Jeffrey Baker. Now, Jeffrey Baker's a guy. I'm pushing Jeffrey Baker. Jeffrey Baker's in shape. You said he was an athlete. He had, he was talking about his goals this, uh, this past or last night. He's going to blow those goals out of the water. He just needs to ask himself this. Am I going to be okay with these low-level goals they gave me? Mm. Jeffrey B. Baker's going to be the next insurance rock star in Murfreesboro. Oh, that big I'm word. I'm prediction Whoa. right now. Cousin Charlie, man. Hey, Roy Fraser, I don't buy, I, Roy Fraser, you're my guy. We, <laughs> hey, we're not taking anything away from yeah. Roy Fraser. Roy Fraser is a rock star, but, uh, but Jeffrey Baker is a guy, you can see he's hungry. You see the determination in his eyes. Here's what I like. We had somebody cancel at the last second, and I said, he brought up, well, what about Jeffrey Baker? He's interested in doing this. Because I've told everybody the mentoring program is going to be six weeks, so if you miss Tuesday night, we'll come back and we'll get you in six weeks. So he said, well, how about Jeffrey? I'm like, call him. I didn't think at 5 to 5 he would be able to commit and come. Did he commit? Went, yeah, he came. He showed up late, but no. He did show up a little late, but he was in. Well, maybe you called him. Yeah, we called him in a last, but but he still showed up. So what that tells you is he's got a hunger to improve. He knows there's something more inside of him. Sure. That's that's the only reason why you do this kind of stuff. You know, it's not. It's not if you get knocked down. We're all gonna get knocked down in life. Mm -hmm. But it's how many times you're gonna get back up, and when you get back up, are you hungry or more? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you one of the biggest problems I had growing or. When I got into business was my bounce back. If something didn't go my way, I would spend too much time on overcoming it. Now, when things don't go my way, I don't even remember it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like like if, if a lead doesn't call back, you used to just sit there and I'd be like, dang, I, I would sit there and almost go into a victim crisis mode where I could not believe they didn't call me back. I would worry about it. I, I would obsess about it. Well, now, I don't even think about that. I mean, I, I hey... The com hey, buddy, sometimes, that's a good point right there, Jeffrey Baker, sometimes when you need confidence, you can go out and you can borrow it from somebody else. That's sure. what's that's what's beautiful about leveling up to people. Whenever I need confidence, whenever I, I need knowledge, I tune in, I watch Grant Cardone, or I, I watch or listen to Ed Millett. Those people, what they say, it, it influences me. It makes me feel better about myself. This is why I do all this stuff, because it forces me to, to listen to those things so I can improve. Right. Hey, I appreciate all the likes, all the comments, everybody that's a loyal watcher. We really, really, really do appreciate it. Hey, Monica, how are you doing, girl? Whose phone is that? You know, if most people Lisa could, here? If most Lisa people, stop by us. If most people could get a glimpse, a glimpse of the potential that they have inside of them. See, we, we lack that because of, of fear. We, we have fear inside of us. If we could ever realize what the potential we have inside of us, the sky's the limit for so many of us. Now, some mm -hmm. people grab a hold of that potential, mm -hmm. but we still never grab all of it. Yeah, I, I needed help to grab a hold of mine. I mean, I, I couldn't figure it out. Who on here, hey, there's 2,000 people on this stream right now, I think. Yeah, yeah, like, give or take one or two. How many people on here feel like they're living up right now to their potential? Hit yes or no, just let me know. Excuse me. Because when I get around big time people, even they say, I'm nowhere near my potential. And, I'm looking, and they'll tell you that they're nowhere near their potential. That's what, that's what I'm saying. They feel, because the more you do, the better you get, it raises your potential. So if you're improving, your, your potential's going up with it. It's not like, hey, this is your ceiling. This is the best you can get. I don't believe that. Do you? Mm -mm. I believe as you get better, you, uh, you, uh, as you get better, your potential rises with that. How long have we been going, Cousin Charlie? We've been going on 18 minutes. 18, damn, that went by fast. Anyways. What about today? Man. Well, one thing you can leave you by is you got to remember, if you're my mentor and you go out here and you throw a rock across the street, mm -hmm. I ought to be able to see what you do, watch what you do, and I ought to be able to throw that rock farther. And so that's what a lot of people don't cap capitalize on. They need to take what they learn. So whatever you do, me and Charlie ought to be able to do it more or better. And then that's, that's how you know you're successful in life if people under you are achieving. Hey, I give Dan Elam a tremendous amount of credit, even though we don't talk as much. I mean, he pushed me to be a better sales guy. You know, and so then I come over here, and then I end up opening my eyes to 
out of the box kind of thinking, which ended up getting me a brand. Mm. So, you know, and I owe that credit to you. So Thank all you those know. things, Thank you, you know, you. Are, are we use all those things <laughs> to, to make us better. So right. don't don't ever underestimate whoever's beside you no matter they always have something to offer. There's always something there. I agree with that. Gain. I agree with that. Hey Brian, thank you for coming last night. Brian's a guy and that guy he needs to be around more people. He's very engaging. He'll What's talk Brian do? What do you see in medical cell Medi or some he kind of in pharmaceutical pharmaceuticals? Ooh. He's a tennis guy. He was here last night. Very, he loves to talk to people. He's very engaging with people. Tiffany, thank you for getting on here as well. So, hey, the one thing I would tell every single body, every single person out here is to become aware of what you've done in the last hour. That should be your goal is to think, have I done enough this hour? Did I do enough this past hour? And what that should do is it should challenge you. It'll cause you to kind of recalibrate, get refocused on what you're trying to do for that day. So uh, the sooner, the sooner you can become aware that, hey, I have not done what I need to do. I need to adjust what I'm thinking. I need to accomplish more. And that only happens if these little alarm clocks go off in your head that say, hey, dude, what have you done? It's been an hour. I like what you're doing, Cousin Charlie. He likes to work in 15-minute blocks. Go hard for 15 minutes, screw off for the next like two hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, thank you for getting on that morning grind. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Do not forget me and AKA the weatherman. We're going to be here for Real Estate 101 today. What a lot right here. They don't know what treat they got coming next week. We're not going to tell them. We ain't going to tell them just if he comes. But today, what we're going to be talking about is if you're buying a home, how do you know what you should offer? on that home because a lot of people have no idea to offer full price to offer 50 percent they have no idea so everybody think hey become aware of what you've done the last hour bring bring that that little checklist that goes off for some of us at the first of the year that's why we have the new year's resolutions what if you brought that back to every hour where you're thinking about hey am i living up to my potential have a great day